the entry for Hilma Hooker can be a bit rough. But Leslie found a cool way to get there from the lake, which is one dive site away. This is our 26th shore dive collection video, and believe it or not, it's our first big wreck. If you've been following us for a while, you may have seen the fishing trawler at Mongol Halto on Aruba, or the tugboat at Tugboat Beach on Curacao. Both of those were fun, but this is a big ship. At 240 feet in length, it's hard to take the whole thing in one view, unless visibility is extremely good. Seriously, it dwarfs everything. Getting back to that visibility though, it can range from 30 to 80 feet, depending on whether it's sunny or cloudy, if there have been recent rains, current, or several other factors. Of course we have more about the rack, but you should also know that there's a pretty darn good reef to explore as well. You can certainly snorkel here, but the wreck is difficult to see from the surface. Still, if you have non-divers in your group, there is plenty for them to observe in the shallows. Like barracuda, bearded fireworms, gobies, or any number of other fish grazing the bottom for food. Blade fire coral heads are great places to see juveniles, and there may even be a voracious school of blue tang passing by. Wind-swept waves along the rock and coral debris coast showcase Bonaire's raw nature. But there is more to see if you look around, like these very small juvenile sergeant majors we found in a tidal pool. Snails are common around the rocks and sand. Quite common in some places. And crabs can be seen scrambling from time to time. On drier ground, there are some pretty interesting fossilized coral formations. This large bush to the left of the entry has some sort of berries and is large enough to shade a few people from the morning sun. Other than that, it's all about the diving. Although this is a wreck dive, we still managed three first-time captures on the reef, including these leather-backed Platydorus, this western comb grouper, and what we think was a spotted spoon nosy eel. There were also a couple of sculptured slipper lobsters, some tarpon, and a green moray eel. We have longer clips of all of these, and of course that spectacular rack coming up. But first, how about a good old-fashioned subscription appeal? We love making these videos, and you seem to enjoy them as well. At least you're watching this one. We don't have any I Love Tropic Lens bumper stickers, but you can show us some love by subscribing. Not ready to commit? Maybe start by just liking this video. We also enjoy answering questions and hearing about your adventures. So go ahead and post something below. It's all good. No pressure. Thanks. Smiley face. The Hilma Hooker rests on Bonaire's southern leeward coast. Take EEG Boulevard south from the airport for about two and a half miles. It's the second dive site after the last houses. Look for the two yellow marker rocks on the right. There's a small driveway that leads to the rock and coral parking area. Most divers turn their cars around and back in on top of the ridge for a shorter walk to the entry. There is no shade, so fellow redheads or anyone else concerned about their skin should take precautions ahead of time. There are also no amenities, not even a garbage can like the one at Pink Beach. We recommend gearing up at home, 
but if you prefer to do so on site or need to swap out tanks for a second dive, make sure to park your car level to make things a bit easier. There are yellow entry exit markers at the south end of the parking area. Along the coast, there's a rocky shelf separating the beach from the water. It's very uneven, and at the end of the shelf, there's a sizable step down into a sandy patch, all of which can be challenging. We have seen several different methods of entry. Many take the step straight on. When these guys got to the step, they turned around for a small back roll. Others rely on their buddies for a stable entry and exit. We would not have recommended walking in with fins on, but to each his own. Once you're in, there are a few rocks and some fire coral to navigate, but it should be relatively easy from there. To maximize bottom time, most divers surface swim out before descending. There are three dive site marker buoys, however only two are attached to the rack. The middle one is closest and is anchored at the top of the drop-off in 20 feet of water. The one on the left is attached to the bow of the ship, and the one on the right is attached to the stern. Depending on current, wave size, and fin speed, it will take about 10 minutes to reach the wreck. Finally, please be careful near the surface. This is a very popular spot for boat divers, and it is not uncommon to see boats tied up at all three buoys. As you surface swim out, or if you need to surface in that area, pay attention to your surroundings and the water column overhead. itself is 235 degrees southwest, which means 55 degrees northeast will get you back to shore. That said, the wreck is quite a bit to the right of the entrance. In general, 280 degrees west will get you to the wreck, and 100 degrees east should get you back to the entry, although your headings may vary depending on which part of the wreck you begin and end with. The Hilma Hooker lies in a sandy stretch between the double reef. Its hull bumps right up against the reef closest to the shore, at about 80 feet. The top of the ship is deeper at 100 feet and points to the farther reef, which is about 40 feet away. Whether you approach the wreck from above or by swimming down the reef, the ship's outline as you get closer is always dramatic. It's easy to get preoccupied with the many parts of the wreck to explore. Given its depth, Please be mindful of your air consumption and no deco limit. With that out of the way, here are some of the highlights we enjoyed. The cargo holds are open and you can often see tarpon hanging out. Swimming around the bridge, crane and other deck infrastructure was pretty fun. And check out the massive rudder and propeller at the stern. There are portholes at the top that provide sanctuary for an assortment of fish, coral, sponge, and algae. If you are very good with buoyancy, there are several swim-throughs with clear visibility to the other side. We started in this open cargo hold and swam through to a larger cargo hold, which also had access to open water. A little later, we swam through a 20-foot hallway from the second cargo hold to a doorway at the stern. Along the way, there are windows and grates to look through as well. While the wreck has been in place for 35 years, it's not very overgrown. Tube sponges can be seen on many edges and railings, while the massive hull is home to lots of small brain and star coral heads. Oh, and this crazy rope-poor rope sponge is growing through one of the bridge windows. You can even find some, shall we say, colorful rope art in the sandy bottom. We did mention there's a double reef, so there are some interesting things to see away from the ship, too. Here is a look at the underwater landscape down to the wreck.
Lastly, note that this is a popular site. On this morning, around 9.30, there were 11 shore divers in the water with more gearing up on the beach, plus boats at each of the moorings. Here's a pro tip. The sun in the early afternoon is directly overhead, providing the brightest light to view the open parts of the ship. And there's a high likelihood of avoiding this. Your call. We dove the Hilma Hooker several times over the course of a few months and noticed a few regulars. The ship appears to be quite popular with sergeant majors, as we saw multiple areas with blue shaded males guarding purple patches of eggs. We also saw this large green moray eel on just about every dive. And tarpon can frequently be seen in and around the wreck. On one of our dives, we saw literally thousands of boga passing between the ship and the second reef. All of this isn't to say that the surrounding reef has nothing to offer. A passing school of blue tang almost obscured this western comb grouper, which was a first time capture for us. And something in this lobed star coral head attracted a school of sergeant majors, a couple of scrawled file fish, a trumpet fish, plus a rock beauty that's in there somewhere. Here are some other examples of the great sea life we saw. Yes, you can dive Hilma Hooker at night. It's just a bit more eerie. The ship looks very colorful under torchlight. And you might see some interesting animals, like this green moray eel out hunting. Or this French grunt swimming upside down for some reason. Not all of the special encounters were on the wreck, however. There were a few waiting out on the reef for our swim back to shore. Yolanda, our Beyond the Corals dive guide, found these two leather-backed platydoras. They were the first we had ever seen. Another first-time capture was this eel poking its head out from the sand. The canine teeth suggest it was a spotted spoon-nose eel. We also spotted a couple of yellow line arrow crabs giving each other what looks like a fairly complicated hug. We're running short on time, but here are a few of the other fascinating sea creatures we saw while diving Hilma Hooker at night. Enjoy!